The Earnestly Speaking Podcast is a show that is founded on free-flowing conversation and may at times venture into mature subjects. Listener discretion is advised. Yeah, Earnestly Speaking Podcast. Let's get it. I'm a giant in New York, in Miami carry heat. So much more in store, my product can flood the street. Opinion Nation Godfather, CEO. Puff in the late 90s, gon' see me blow. Oh. Got my hustle on, no imitation of that. Army of untouchables, Opinion Nation staff. Never an off season, homie. Check the numbers. Heart drop in my own right, supply and southern comfort. Earnestly speaking, my ego is well fed. Earnestly speaking, you're too feeble. No threat. See him like a hurricane. You're a mild breeze. Earnestly speaking, leaving Eli a dynasty. Shame. Welcome to the Listener Speaker Podcast. I'm your host, Ernest E.J. Christian, coming to on a cloudy but really warm Monday afternoon on the line, of course, every week, every Monday. We do this Monday or Tuesday, depending on how I feel. Uh, of course, it's soon the name, <laughs> Kyle F. And Nash. Uh, who just gave me some great news as as we came on came on the air? Some big news. Kyle is expecting him and his wife Aaron are expecting their second child. Well, yeah, no, and, and and I'm going to be a little bit fair to you too. You talking about Monday or Tuesday when you feel like let's not lie, it's when Logan feels like it. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> that is very true. If Logan's not going to sleep, then uh, I got a problem. I mean, I can hold him, but I, I don't. I don't. I don't not. But. Yeah, Kyle. And let's be clear. Logan mm-hmm. on the air has called out some of your weak takes. It's kind of fun. A oh, quiet. Well, you know what? I, I I hope Logan makes you realize what the, the 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 effort I put through with two children now, as you have as you embark on your second uh, child here. Congratulations, number one. Oh, d- listen. All the smack I talk on you, I'm not even prepared to question that respect. No, that's a thing. I already have it. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you and I had a lot of fun on the uh, on social media all the weekend, and normally this this is mostly NFL centric podcast. With when we talk, for the most part, although we do dabble in the college as well, sometimes some movies and stuff. But we're, we're going to kick off today's today's episode with the college football playoff. And as we said last week, <laughs> as we said last week, we knew doesn't doesn't be the number one topic because obviously it is official one through four. They copied again Earth, Earth Speaking Media's uh, rankings, and it went ahead and, and greeted me also, too, as I told you on Twitter. One, Bama. Two, Clemson. Three, Notre Dame. And four, Oklahoma is your final four for this year. Left out, of course, is uh, those guys at Ohio State who continue to bitch and bitch for the second straight year, even though they lose games they're not supposed to lose, and that's just that. Uh, Kyle, <laughs> you, and I got, you, and I got, you and I got into it a little bit this weekend. Um, and, look, I am I, – I can't remember. I, I know G wasn't a proponent of the uh, playoff. You, you're a proponent of the playoff, right? I am. I am. And I, are you a proponent? Uh, I, I, oh, no, no, no. Wait, before we get further, are you a proponent of an eight-team playoff? I'm not against it. I, I don't think. I mean, people. You see, people. Here, here's the thing, and and, and what I'm going to say actually both supports and negates a, a, a an eight-game playoff. But right. the question you have to ask yourself, if you're for it against it, here's where I am, and, and, I, and I actually stand very close to this. I was very impressed before uh, college game day a couple weeks back when UCF hosted Cincinnati. Reese Davis talked on the top uh, 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 on the topic of playoff expansion, and he said playoff expansion to eight is a great idea if there's no such thing as a guaranteed bid because all that'll do is recreate the problems that we have now with this four game system all over again. That's right? So a lot of the times when you hear about expansion to playoffs, they're like. Oh, well, the Power 5 Conference winners, well, they all get in. Yeah, right. You really think, you really think that a, 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 a pairing uh, uh, of the winners between Washington and Utah belong in this in any playoff? Screw that. The facts of the case are these. The MAC championship was more interesting than the Pac-12, okay? Oh, Come that, on. that was an ugly game. I will, I will admit that. I, I could make a case of Washington to some degree. But I won't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I could <laughs> that have was case funny. Right, I like what you did there. You know, because to be honest with you, they're, they're literally like maybe three players from being unbeaten. And, and let's be real, folks. The only reason why Utah in the playoff would be good is I can make a ton of jokes surrounding the movie My Cousin Vinny, and any time you can watch or reference that movie is a good time, period. Oh, the best. The best. The best. I love, I love, I love Tessie and Company in the movie. Um, 
but we got to fight a lot. Well, not fight. We, you and I get into little these little squabbles on on we, Twitter. We, we always do. This is what we do. You're yeah. an FSU fan that uses the rock in memes. You're you're always a mess. It's okay. Yeah, but you know, I, I, look, I'm torn. I, I I can help. I love the rock, but I also love Florida State. What can we do? Not like the rock and not like Florida State? No. <laughs> You know? Yeah, no, that's that's the thing. That's a legitimate problem. Being a heat, being a heat fan does save me, though. As you always constantly remind me, go heat, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, let me, let me ask you a question because I, I I look I I I asked you to record a podcast. I, I I record a Periscope this morning, defending my position on the on the playoff and why Ohio how State fans need to shut the fuck up. You know, which of course they won't anyway because they're a bunch of little, little bitches, whatever. Um. Yeah, you know, that's an interesting sentiment coming from an FSU fan, but I digress. Whoa, whoa, whoa. but I don't whine. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. Hold on, I don't whine. We don't deserve to be in the playoff this year. I, it was, well, we we right. don't deserve to be in, 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 in the bowl game this year, dude. Our team sucks. You know. So, I mean, hey, at least listen. You're being better than Florida fans who did their best to to uh, stiff arm UCF from being in the Peach Bowl, so they had to fly across the country. I said it. I wish I could have seen that game. Actually, I, I, I feel cheated not seeing that Florida UCF game. I mean, a lot of really people cheated. do. Listen, even even one of the local guys here, you probably know the name uh, Mike Bianchi from the Orlando Sentinel, mm-hmm. actually wrote a column about why that's the better matchup in the Peach Bowl. And he went on and on on his radio show today about how bad that is. I mean, listen, I'm biased because I don't want to fly to Arizona, but looks like I'm gonna, you know, to cover yeah. UCF playing against LSU. Although that's, we'll that's still a good game, news. though. That's still well, again, it is a good and game. And here's the thing: and and here's the thing also, perception. for the third time. It's going to be great. And, but, and here's the perception also too, Kyle. If they beat LSU, who was once yep. at one point a top five team in the country, not not just a few weeks, not only a few weeks ago, okay, that's two years in a row where you have you have bowl games against Auburn, who by the way did beat Alabama that same year, you know, and then beat LSU, who did beat Georgia early this year, that helps UCF's case. That may help next year moving forward if, if there's any argument to UCF being in at least in the conversation for a uh, playoff. Agreed. Yeah, I think I think that conversation will be helpful. Um, but but yeah, as far as Florida <laughs> being go, I, I agree that LSU, in my opinion, is better to advance UCF's program than playing the Gators. But um, the reason why I think uh, silencing the Gator public, especially in Florida, is then you'll have more people within the state of Florida who now back and respect UCF. That's um, the, the, biggest, the biggest pro- Yeah, exactly. And the biggest problem you have in the state of Florida, you know, all these people who are all like, well, why don't you join a new conference at UCF? As if they can just fry up some chicken and bribe them with a nice dinner to get into a conference. It's not how this works. But um, a, a good first step in towards doing that, if they're trying to get in anywhere other than the Big 12, which is undeserving of any sort of any playoff competition or consideration whatsoever, just like the ACC is if your name isn't Clemson, um, right. You know, it, it, it's it's it takes more than that, but I, I don't know. That's that's kind of where I'm at. Okay, let me ask a question. Well, first off, who has the worst takes, college football fans or pro pro sports fans? Who has the who, who has, has the worst, worst who, has, who has the worst takes? The worst takes in the world, like who takes? Yeah. Ooh, gosh. Um. Oh man, that's a that's okay. who, who does who does a horrible job I'm, defending their they're defending their teams worse, college fans or pro fans? That's a great question. I got to go. go, I'm going to go see, but I'm going to pull one out of my day job here and go data man on you. I'm going to say college, but only for this reason. There's more teams out there to have bad takes about. And there's a lot. Every single college fan of some sort, for the most part, has a bad take about their team. Mm -hmm. That's a fact, right? You know, I'm sure at some point you've tried to defend to me Charlie Ward even though the fact he didn't actually get drafted as an NFL player and went to go play for uh, for a basketball team, so I don't know how seriously I could actually take him, for example. Right. You know, uh, the fact that Florida hasn't actually had a, a, a an NFL quarterback that's actually been any degree of successful for the long term. Sorry, Tebow fans. Facts don't care about your feelings. You know, that's something that, that I can hold over Florida, for example. Miami fans, just stay out of jail and maybe we'll talk, right? If you've seen Liar Liar, uh, there's they a team clear, in there. They've been clear, though. They've been clear last, the last decade or so. Oh, yeah, sure, for the last decade or so. But right after they were damn near banned. I'm just saying. Right. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's it's a longer conversation. But I only say all that in passing. Every Every school 
has its flaws and marks, right? UCF situation is such that, such that they're still small, they're still young, and they're going to sound whiny to bigger programs for that reason. If you can't acknowledge that fact, you're not a complete uh, analyst of the situation. Right. And yet, more and more, people tend to forget the fact that they're only 39 years. If, if UCF's football program was a person, it could have only been running for president for the past four years, okay? That's, a, that's, that's a good analogy. That's, a, that's a, a great a great perspective. That being said, um, the four we have right now, because I, I am dying to see Bama and o- Oklahoma. I, I want to catch for, for for weeks. It, and not only that, it's going to be my in, near near neck of my words. It's going to be the Orange Bowl. So I'm hoping to go to the game. Actually, I'm trying to find a way to go to the game. Um, that being said. Um, we'll talk off air. Moving yeah. on. <laughs> that being said, do you, do you uh, agree with the four in this vacuum? Do I agree with the four? Yeah. No, I don't. But let me tell you why. Okay. Right. One minute people tell me that it's strength of schedule that's important and that wins don't matter. I mean, hell, bro. Why is UCF not even even in the top seven, let alone the top that's four? That's true. Right. Because strength of schedule keeps getting beaten over their head like a redheaded stepchild. And I'm not here to tell you, by the way, that it's wrong. I just think that people, if they're going to talk about strength of schedule, need to reevaluate the conference of the ACC in its goddamn entirety. Who want to try to tell me that BC was a good team that should have lost to Temple, but Temple's bad because they're in the American Conference and BC is good because they're in the ACC? Bull crap. We got. Anyways, I'm tangenting. The punchline is <laughs> um, one in one breath. You want to tell me about strength of schedule and how barely winning against weak teams should hurt you more than wins and losses, and then we have Oklahoma who needed overtime to beat Army and needed Texas Tech. Uh, or beat Texas Tech by only 40 points. And I know you're already going to say, EJ, well, didn't they win those games? Guess what? <laughs> UCF won all their games and no one gave a shit. You got my voice right, just for the record. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. Yeah, that was funny, dude. You derailed me on that. <laughs> you went self-deprecating and I was not prepared for that. It's okay. Oh, yeah, that's what we do here. That's what we do here. Um, no, no. But, but it, it, And listen, I'm not trying to tell you that I, I have my own personal reason for disliking uh, Oklahoma. Play some goddamn defense for 30 seconds, and maybe I wouldn't be so bitter about your entire conference. Your entire conference, by the way, who back in 2013 was represented by Baylor and lost in a shootout to Blake Portal. Stop it. Okay. Anyway, so, sorry. Brief, that being said, brief, so, uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and assume that your ire right now of the four teams <clears throat> is towards Oklahoma. No question. Well, and I'm not. I'm not a fan of Clemson either, but I don't have enough evidence to overturn them. And they went unbeaten too. I mean, you, they lose one game, they're out. Uh, they, right, I, I exactly. Think like, I think have they blown it? That would have reflected, I think, honestly, on on, on them. If, if if they lost the pit this weekend, they would have been out. Well, I mean, you tell me, Jake. When was Clemson challenged this season? Um, A and M, Syracuse. Syracuse does not count. Syracuse was destroyed by Notre Dame. If we use that well, argument, right. then Clemson's in big trouble. Well, well a, lot of, a lot of these, a lot of these schools were in the in the picture for, and then you know, late year, late year, they, they got beat. Like LSU, they were unbeaten in in the picture, and then they got beat up late in the year. I mean, you know. Well, Michigan, right, but uh, what I'm trying to tell you is 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 you're you're comparing Notre Dame to these other ACC teams. Okay, that's fine. Notre Dame at least beat Michigan, who is a top ten team in the nation even now. Oh no, even, I, I can even, argue, no, no, I agree. With you. I, I can argue that you can argue now that you, if you swap Notre Dame and Clemson, I have no problem with that. No, no, that's not even where I am. I'm talking about the rest of the ACC as a conference is so goddamn weak. But people want to t- tell me that you know they belonged in the top twenty five at any point. Stop mm-hmm. it. Anyways, right. Well, again, I I, I think what, what it comes down to is this: is that Oklahoma. Still, you know, the one loss they had, they avenged it um, this weekend. Um, and and again, I, I'm not. Everything you said is not is not, is not that I disagree with you. I just have an issue with with the vacuum of Ohio State, Oklahoma, because those were the only two teams that you can really consider at this point for the fourth spot. I mean, who else? Absolutely. Would, who, I mean, we can say UCF, but the fact of my is that I mean, it's not. It's, oh, I'm not. I'm not bringing UCF in. I UC. I, I bring in UCF only from the standpoint. Of the committee's logic is to keep them out, do the strength of schedule, right. and performing poorly against right. bad teams. Right. And Oklahoma has committed the same crimes, and no one cares. That's right. Right. I, no. 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 So, you're not wrong. You're not wrong there. Um, in the vacuum of what I what I'm talking about, which is Ohio State and Oklahoma. Right. It was really this simple. Who had the worst loss of the two? 
Who had the worst, worst loss is a great question. Who had the best win, Ernest Christian? Arguably, arguably you, you can argue Ohio State, yeah. Not close, okay? They slam dunked Michigan again in a rivalry game and a game where they were not favored, okay? Oklahoma needed two shots to beat Texas. That is a fact. That's true. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a good argument. That being said, and I, I, I come back to this every time. You can't lose to Purdue by 29 points. Who gives a damn? If they lost to Purdue okay. by even, even by five points, I can see the argument even more so. But you'll lose you by 29 points. You know what? The best points. argument you actually have, you haven't used yet. They need overtime to beat Maryland. I, I was just going to get there. I was just, just going to get there, too. And, and they, they, okay. they look, even the Michigan State win, they didn't look that good. I mean, the scoreboard would indicate that, but they, that was a close game to the, in the fourth quarter. Well, we, we, we want to talk about close games in the fourth quarter. Cool. Texas Tech. I still win. No, Go. No, 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 no. Again, <laughs> your argument is not invalid, but the Kansas, again, they won those games. I think that's, 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 that, that's, that, that's where we split. They won those games. They also, you know, beat Texas, Texas they, they, you know, got to finish that, uh, finish that loss, of course, to Texas early in the year. And you can't lose to Purdue by 29 points. That, that's, where, that's where it ends for me personally. Okay, so what you're what you're clinging to is one single t- moment in a three or four month season. That's unacceptable. Okay, what I could tell you is all year that Oklahoma tackles like trash, plays zero defense, I agree, and has turned in multiple. D- in no, 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 no. fact, I'll go further with you. I'm not even convinced the, the the four teams in here are the four best teams in college football. I can argue Georgia's better than, than both Oklahoma and, and Ohio State. Ah, uh, and see, that's the key to my whole speech, too. You're narrowing it to Ohio State and, and Oklahoma, um, which I agree with you. is the most flawed argument of them all. Georgia lost to two top ten teams, and now they're kept out because of some, you know, arbitrary line that's drawn because they're both in the same – they happen to be in the same conference with a team that's been in the damn playoff since its inception, basically, mm-hmm. and has been at the top of the goddamn uh, polls for, what, a decade? So what you're trying to tell me is you're penalizing Georgia for Nick Saban. That is trash. But a team should be penalized for giving up 189 points in a single and month. Was, and it was beating Nick Saban, too, by the way, this weekend. Um, that being said, all these arguments, all these arguments being made, further defends why the BCS was actually a good thing. Because Stop it. Because, again, Stop the it. BCS – look, I, no, 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 no. I, I, I'm not saying the BCS – I want the BCS – I like a playoff, and I told I said this on Twitter yesterday. The reason I wanted a playoff is because I I am, I am a person that agrees that if you if there's an argument, well, let's prove it on the field. The only way you can do it is do a playoff. That's why I'm right. for eight teams. However, a lot of the college football arguments go with a lot of biases. BCS don't know who Nick Saban is. BCS don't know, know, know who Urban Meyer is or Kyle Murray or any other name. They know they know the formula and the records. That's it. So. I'm curious. I'm really curious, and I'm sure they've done this already. I haven't seen it on, on, on the internet yet. If the BCS existed today, how would their four, top four rankings look? I'm really curious. Well, yeah, and we, don't, and we don't have that yet, and we won't until after the bowl games are played, I believe, um, because that, that fact that you mentioned right there, EJ Christian, let me tell you, people bitch about UCF, air quotes, claiming a national championship, but to key, the key to that being legitimized, there is one of the surveys in the BFC rankings. Yes, I said it on purpose. Mm-hmm. Actually, put UCF number one. The colleague, the colleague matrix, put UCF number one. So they're still in the record book, no matter how much anyone hates it. As fact, I ha- I am compelled by historical fact, whether I want to or not. And technically, I don't buy it. I just think it's a great marketing uh, ploy by Danny White, and it's still kicking ass. Eleven months later, by the way. Mm-hmm. I'm still compelled as a writer to write it because it is, in fact, a fact. I, I, you know what's funny? I would be against the idea of having both the BCS system as, as well as the uh, playoff exist. Why would we use a BCS system with a four-team format? That end all the arguments. Um, no, the diminish most of the arguments. You know what I'm saying? It's having a committee who have biases. I mean, did you see who – I don't know if you know who you, – yeah, you, you know who Joel Clyde is, actually. Um, Absolutely. He was saying on his podcast last week that there are people – on this committee that that can't even vote in certain certain ways because there are three people who are connected to other people that have teams involved in this in this four teams and five teams. Um, there's more, active there's active athletic directors on the committee. That's yeah, all you need to know. Vote because Christmas. because of the fact that their their schools are in the in the mix. Bingo. So why not have the BCS system 
and play for a 14 playoff. That's how I want. That's that's how, that's what I want to see if so someone who actually has a BCS formula still right now, if it was in play right now this Monday in this vacuum, how would it rank? That's how I want to know. Well, here's the other thing, and that's a great that's a great philosophical argument, EJ Christian. Unfortunately, nothing like that's going to change until 2026. Here's a more practical solution. How about the makeup of the committee not involve active members of the damn administration of the universities? How about that? And that's a fix that can be made now. Personally, I, I think it should have a committee at all. Computers, baby. Well, that's a different conversation. I mean, that's that's in the books. There's nothing we can do about that. But that being said, in the vacuum, what we do have, we, we do have a playoff. You know, we have a playoff. Um, I'm okay with it with the four in the vacuum. But if you ask me who the four best teams in college football are, Oklahoma's on top four. <laughs> Georgia's definitely on top four. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 someone it's will complain about the fact that it's the SEC. Right. Yeah. You lost to LSU and Alabama. That's pretty good. Okay. So, all right. Moving on. NFL time. Um, the Packers fired Mike McCarthy yesterday at the of the Cardinals. Yeah. Um, um, wow. We may have called him leaving, but did you see it happening that soon? Because no, I didn't. In fact, in fact, I was initially when I saw the report, I, my reaction was, "Well, let them coach out the let them coach the rest of the year." But really, you think about it. If you know you're getting fired anyway, do you really want to coach here? Take the paid leave. You know, and not, it's not like McCarthy's not a good coach. He'll get on the job somewhere else. We choose to coach next year. So, in a lot of ways, they did him a favor, and the team can start preparing for uh, the search a month early. Well, what that tells me uh, that they did it that way is that they already have a candidate in mind to replace him. I have no idea who that would be at this juncture, but um, uh, yeah, you, you don't fire somebody early without uh, knowing what the next move is, or if you do, you're dumb which I can't necessarily rule out with the Packers organization, not to say that they always have run things bad, but they have moments. Um, so I, 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 I'm not an insider or anything like that. I don't even have any uh, speculation as to who it may be, but that kind of tells me they have someone in mind for whom they, they will probably pull the trigger. Jim Harbaugh? I don't know. I've heard, I saw someone write an article about that. <laughs> I'm, 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 no, somebody, read, somebody put out, a, I, I believe it might have been clutchpoints.com, put an article about Jim Harbaugh possibly – what if Jim Harbaugh was the uh, the guy in waiting? Which, by the way, you're late on that party, not you, but them, because I was speculating that two weeks ago on the show about if Jim Harbaugh decided yeah. to leave Michigan, what could what kind of jobs be out there? And Aaron Rodgers, coaching Aaron Rodgers, could be a possibility. Who knows? The same. So, way, well, way, way let's put late. it this way: this is that's also a guy who who rubbed Peyton Manning the wrong way, already previously knowing him. Do you really think Aaron Rodgers will adopt Jim Harbaugh? I don't. But no. that's, that's still not a that's still not a bad take by you. I just that's why I don't see it. No, I, I, I don't see it either. But I'm gonna say if he did choose to want to leave and come to the pros, that would be the most intriguing job out there for him. Maybe he, he'd um, take the call. Oh, I, I'm, I'm I'm taking the phone call definitely and see what we got. Um, that being yeah. said, the Packers free fall man. It, it, I mean, we all said last week, you know, well, they're probably done, but they can win out really. You know, we said more than a and, month ago they were done. Yeah, yeah, but we all said okay. But we, but we were saying this past this, this coming week that okay. Yeah. Now they could probably win out, but the schedule being lightened up a little bit now. Arizona's next. You're a 14 point favorite at home, and all you do is actually lose to Arizona at home. I mean, all what you, is wrong? All Green you Bay, do is though? lose. What is wrong, Green Bay, man? All you do is that sounds like a very depressing remix of a song by DJ Khaled, but I digress. Yeah, it, it, um, I went opposite. I went, I went, I went non positive. <laughs> yeah. No, man. Uh, uh, what do listen? Um, all you can do is 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 take the lesson at this point, right? You need to start looking for ways to actually protect Aaron Rodgers. You need to start looking for people who could actually make impact on offense. And oh, by the way, somehow still at the same time, uh, worry about the defense, all while dealing with the specter of Aaron Rodgers' contract. I'm not trying to tell you that's an easy thing. I'm just telling you that's what needs to happen. Well, it's going to be fascinating to see where the Packers go. Um, I, somebody was saying on social media that they don't think the Packers will – they're so cheap they won't pay much for a coach either. Well, if you don't, then you're screwed. Uh, good luck, Aaron Rodgers. got one title. That's it. Because you need to get a good coach. You need to get a coach that's able to work with Aaron Rodgers. And, and not only that, get a defense too, especially. Get a defense. You know, so just saying. Um, this, that might this might be one of be, be one of the rare jobs where a defensive coach might be the better move. Todd Bowles. Interesting. Carry on. I'm just saying you have the guys that I don't know. Somebody can work with. Okay. Moving on. All right. 
big win last night for the Chargers, huh? In Pittsburgh. Um, for, and more so, not so much that they won the game. Is this that they did it without Melvin Gordon? They did it on the road on prime time. Perception game, biggest win for the Chargers in, I would dare say, six years. Not close. Not close. I, I, uh, I, I, I mean, the instincts, my response is that's not close. What it does do is make us look look very smart. I'll tell you what, Ernest Julius Christian, facts. What have we been talking about? The Chargers are there. They just keep getting the bad breaks. And the Steelers are there. They just have no discipline. Discipline uh, won the day this day. So uh, am I, are you saying I'm overrating the win a little too much? No, I'm saying you're you're right on point. Oh, okay. Well, yay. <laughs> uh, listen, it happens every now and again. I mean, you're not a complete waste of space. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> That's bad. I need a rewrite. <laughs> no, seriously, though. No. no. Um, Perception-wise, because even when the Chargers are good, even going back to the mid-2000s, they were always that accident waiting to happen team. You know, the 14-2 Chargers, but they lose to the wing at home. Um, I, I got bad breaks in that game. You know, things like that. So we come to expect, oh, the Chargers are good, but you know what? At some point, they'll, they'll just fall on their heads and, you know, do what they do normally. Not, I mean, right, right. now, they're, they're, creating their own, they're, they're creating their own breaks here. I mean, that's, you have to admire that. And, and, and you know what makes them extra scary in that front is the way that you beat the Patriots is you create your own breaks. Yeah. If that is not precisely the statement that could be used to describe the Eagles' victory in the Super Bowl, I don't know what is. Exactly. And I think this is a, this is a win. Like if, if I'm like – a three or four seed. You talk about like you know wanting to play, if one play the one and two seeds. If I'm a three or four seed, I don't care if you have home field advantage. I'm not even sure. I, I'm not even sure if uh, you want to play the Chargers first. The first game is the Chargers. Like if you're Hell the no. Texans or the Patriots, say that you're playing for that three, you know, two, the two spot. <clears throat> I, I'm trying to avoid the four spot <laughs> because Fact. the Chargers are locked down for the five, and I, I think if you play the four spot, you're in trouble. Regardless of you're home yeah. or not, and last night showed that. All right. To the to the weirdest nine game win streak ever, well, Kyle, it don't seem so weird anymore. I actually put I actually picked Cleveland with the points yesterday against Houston, and Houston dominated this game front finish. Um, starting to buy in a little bit now, a little bit. Hold it, can we stop and 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 and, and lay down some facts? Because some people owe me some dishes of crow in their damn faces. I'm one. Can we all stop talking about not you? But Baker Mayfield as the next Messiah, oh, that's okay. Lamont brought us. But I-, I told you guys that that honeymoon would end way back when you were trying to tell me, oh, he's better than Tyron Taylor. <laughs> All right? Hmm. Stop it. Okay? They got a great defense. They have a quarterback who needs to learn to be a game manager but has too big of an ego to be one. Well... You know, Cleveland. Well, yeah, no, 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 no. I, I, you got a good point there, um, but I, I think I want to credit more to the Texans here because now there's sure, now there's sure, something. Absolutely. No, remember two weeks ago I was saying, well, you know, the winning these games is it's, it's it's impressive, but you know, now you're like, well, I don't know all these close games. You know, it goes the other way, then then maybe they're four and seven, seven and four, seven and four. You know, now you won nine games in a row, and now the wins are starting to come. You know. The, 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 they're not blowouts now. Now they're, now they're blowouts. Now, now they're convincing wins now. So, you know, style points don't really matter in the NFL, except it doesn't matter when it's, when it's about perception. And the Texans are starting to show, are starting to flip that now. Well, and, and you know, listen, and I hate to, I, I hate to bring this up because you and I on this show try to dodge uh, social and political things, but listen, the Kareem Hunt situation matters football wise. With him missing and that going on in the locker room, that could make things shaky. And that could be bring KC down artificially. We could be in a situation where the road to the Super Bowl passes through Foxborough based on a rematch of Texans Patriots. Very, very, very. That's a good point. And right now, Texans right now are right in, in the mix. That it's funny. It may come down to that week one win where the Pats beat the Texans week one. All of a sudden, that 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 two spot possibly, maybe maybe even the one spot. Mm-hmm. If she's who 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 would have thought? Week, that week one game may be the thing that pushes him over the edge. Ooh, yeah. I mean, here's what it is: like whoever at, at this point, and I don't have the seedings in front of me, but whoever's playing the Chargers has a problem. I agree. If the Chargers somehow end up in the fifth seed, 
the winner of the uh, the um, actually no, the AFC South is the, the Texans. I don't know. The Texans might be the only team I feel confident that might be able to beat the Chargers um, in the South. In so the South, that's right. yeah. Um, well, interesting. We got off of what we played that, but it's, 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 it's definitely getting very interesting now in the AFC. Um, Kyle, what is on the Panthers? They lost again, four straight. You know, I, I don't know that I have a good answer yet. Uh, people have started to figure out that um, the, the, the defense is a, is a one-trick pony. They're a great front. Um, and if you, can, if you can allay that, ever since they got rid of Josh Norman, you can throw the ball on these cats if you get the protection right. Um, I, I don't necessarily know that that was necessarily the main point in the winning of that game, but that's what I see. And, and, and the offense... Listen, when your offense runs entirely now through Christian McCaffrey or Cam Newton, you're in a predictable place. Uh, Calvin, uh, Calvin Benjamin uh, being gone, not having necessarily the receiver that I would call great on that roster anymore. Um, I mean, functions is decent, but, you know, is Greg Olson even on the field right now? You know, they, they're, they're just, they don't have targets. Um, and Cam, listen, the problem is Cam is having the season of his career this year, yeah. numbers-wise, um, and, and, and they just have nothing to show for it. So I, 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 it's, it's tricky. I, I, I don't have a good handle on why the Panthers struggle here. Um, they, they don't have necessarily had an easy schedule, let's be clear. They're one of a few teams in the NFL that actually feature trying to play <laughs> two of the most explosive offenses in the league four times. And then, oh, by the way, somewhere had the defending Super Bowl champions on there, too. That's rough, man. So It's very rough. And, in fact, they just, this morning fired the defensive coach, Brady Hoke, and their cornerbacks coach, uh, Jeff Mara, in Mara. So they're, they're already making changes now in season within the staff. Um, it, it, it is shocking, though, because this team, not even a month ago, we were talking about this team being a fringe. Remember we were doing my Super Bowl tiers and fringes and stuff, and they were right there on that, on that Super Bowl tier, like right up below it, second tier team that – could probably get into that Super Bowl tier conversation, and now they're, they're, trying, they're just trying to fight against the, the freaking playoffs. <laughs> so well, I'll say this: I, I, I didn't put them as as high as you did. Um, I'm actually, I, I guess they're landing about where I would have expected them to, frankly. Um, although I'll, I'll admit, when they started to make playoff noise, I felt like they were doing better than I thought they would. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and it's a shame too because, as you just said a little while ago, the the, the North Turner Cam Newton thing is, is working. It is working, yeah, absolutely. I'm, so, I'm glad to see they didn't make that change. And, you know, I saw the defensive coordinator thing this weekend, but as I was talking about, you know, the anomaly of being able to beat them downfield, if you get past the front, I, I'm glad you reminded me of it because it actually supports what I was saying. So there you go. Right. Yeah, it's a shame. And, you know, obviously these moves, they tell you that it is a defense, not the offense. So. Well, it's a shame unless your name happens to be Danny Thompson. Shout out to Danny Thompson. <laughs> Well, the Falcons still stink too, so whatever. <laughs> Ooh, shot fired! Shot fired, deservedly so. I mean, are they last place or tied last place with Tampa? I think. I I I believe I, they are. I, I just and comment. I listen. I don't want to turn this into another how you know Matt Ryan is is what exact is is what I thought he was overrated. Okay. Well, I'll say that defense, uh, the, the, that Ravens defense was suffocating yesterday against Atlanta. That, that, that I will say. That's that's what I will whoa, say. Whoa! 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 Are you trying to tell me that the Ravens are good on defense? That is such a unique take. Sir. They're old. I'm blown away. They're old and good on defense. That's the word. That's the weird part. They're actually old and still good on defense. Ray Lewis was old and good on defense. Ray Lewis, uh, our defense is Ray Lewis is, is an anomaly, man. Defense. Ray Lewis is Ray, look, 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 Ray Lewis is an anomaly. <laughs> I'm trying to show you this. This Baltimore franchise is an anomaly, kid. That's what I'm getting at. Well, John Harbaugh, man, just according for his life. Yeah, right. In that life. a bit, though. I, I, I tell you what, Flacco's done. You can't go back to to Flacco now, where they're playing. You you can try. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, of course yeah. they said the same thing about Peyton Manning in 2015, and then they won a Super Bowl. But I digress. Yeah, but that's a little different, though. That's a little. I mean, <laughs> eh, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm with you. I should just saying there, man. But that's a little different. That's oh, sure. I, it's not a. It, it's not a. It's not a simulation by any means. Certainly not. I'm trying to find the uh, playoff picture um, update on the uh, NFL.com. It'll pop up here. So I'm trying to waste time here talking See, to you. Some of, us, some of us try to stall smoothly by bringing up other topics. I love how you're honest with you, with the uh, listenership being like, 
I don't have it in front of me, so I'm going to. Well, I tried it, and it's failing. Like, so I said, you know what? I say, fuck it. I'm, I'm done trying. I'm done trying. This is a. Let's be honest here. This is, hey, listen, I'm trying to find this see, Again, this is the honesty you have with your listenership. I'm even trying to come in and use some comedy to, to buy you more time to solve the problem. I appreciate the question. it. And you're like, no, bleep you. That's bleep amazing you. that you actually What's know I'm doing that. This is how you know you and I have a good rapport, and you've been doing this for a couple of years now. Um, that you know I'm, I'm already doing that without me even telling you that. Like, you, you have an idea. Oh, he's probably looking for something on his computer. He's going to stall as much as he can. Um, well, you know that that's going to bring back bring back then a recurring topic on this show uh, once more. Hashtag talent moving that's on. Right. Yeah, you're the best, brother. All right. <laughs> Before we go, we do this every week now. As you get down to the down to the wire, the pennant, as you call it, the playoff picture is now taking focus. Now, this is the AFC first locks and unlocks. So obviously, one two seeds in the AFC currently right now. Chiefs one, Patriots two. Uh, that's uh, current right now, and then you have the three seed right now is the Texans at nine and three. The four seed, the Steelers at seven four to one. Yeah, the five seed currently the Chargers was, was right at this point a lock. I mean that has to be a lock. Um, and the six seed, the Ravens, who are now alone at seven and five. Um, the last couple of weeks we've been saying five locks towards the Chiefs, Patriots, uh, Chargers, Steelers, and Texans. Um, I'm gonna remain there, but I gotta tell you, Baltimore is creeping up on the uh, on the Steelers now in the division. Yeah, isn't that crazy though? Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I mean, if that happens, you're going to have multiple AFC North representatives. I don't necessarily have a problem with that. I just feel like that's what's going to happen. Right. Um, I'm not prepared to lock the Ravens um, at this juncture. I'm going to stick with the Steelers just because I, I talk about how they lack discipline. Me too. Um, when they're back against it, suddenly decide they and they suddenly decide to care. Um, they're going to lock in. That being said. I don't know what whether uh, Big Ben, the bus driver, um, is is starting to cause locker room problems of his own. Um, you know, he's not wrong. The point he made that he deserves to criticize these play, uh, his players uh, and his teammates because he's been in the league lack, that long. Hell, I would even submit Ernest Christian that that is in fact his job to do so constructively. However, to to drag them into the press the way that happened exactly. And then be all like, I'm Big Ben. I'm mightier than you, mother. Beep. This guy forgets he's only years removed from being called a misfit in the beginning of his career for having a motorcycle accident. And then, you know, uh, <laughs> if the Me Too movement was a thing back when he had his allegations, he would still be in the ire of SJWs everywhere, and rightfully so. Yeah, I agree. Um, like I said, I'll leave the five. Uh, I'm not really ready to put the Ravens on lock yet. But what a disappointing loss for the Colts yesterday in Jacksonville. Forget the fact they lost the oh game. Oh, my God. Six right. to nothing to Cody Kessler? I mean, listen. First of all, the six isn't surprising. It was Cody Bleeping Kessler. Um, for all these people who want to try to tell me, hey, the Colts offensive line is so super awesome. Oh, my gosh, you wrote it so inaccurately that looks successful to fight, to fight that offensive line. Really? At me all you want now. Where'd you go, haters? Oh, look how quiet it got. Exactly. And all of a sudden, the Dolphins, who, were, who wasn't really that impressed with us against Buffalo, still the mix. So you got three, you got four teams right now in the hunt for that sixth seed. Now, <laughs> okay. all one game behind. Dolphins, Colts, Broncos, De- Titans. De- Denver's the most impressive right now, the four. Right now, the way they're playing. Now, that's the correct statement. Let's be careful with this Dolphin stuff. And I, I wrote agree. about this, actually, in a brief in a brief uh, analysis of the game for DolphinsWire.com. Um there's good news and bad news in the win. Is it a W? Yes. Did the Dolphins need it to assure that they win at least four out of the five remaining games starting with, uh, starting with this past weekend? Yes. Um, excuse me, starting next weekend? Yes. They only got 175 yards, EJ Christian. Yeah, that, that, I'll gain three, almost three to one. I mean, Buffalo had, what, four and 14 total yards yesterday? Josh yeah. Allen had more than twice as many rushing yards as their top, run, uh, uh, top runner, uh, of course, that would be uh, Kenyon Drake, mm-hmm. okay? And he threw for about mm, 70 more yards than Ryan Tannehill. They had three turnovers, Ernest Christian. That's the only reason the Dolphins won that game. And they're looking pretty soon to face off against Tom Brady next week. And uh, they're going and dealing with Kirk Cousins in uh, Minnesota. Now, it? It's a home game, though. I mean, they do play well at home. I, historically, history does speak well for the Dolphins against the Patriots at home. I, I will, I'm not saying they win the game, but saying the history that does help Dolphins. 
historically they have more on their defensive line facing across from whatever's protecting Tom Brady. Listen, and Tom Brady is not going to make that many mistakes like Josh Allen. Hell, Kirk Cousins is probably not going to make as many mistakes as you would see made in this game by Josh Allen. People want to tell me that Josh Allen is the future of Buffalo. I'm not buying either. I like Tyrod Taylor better, frankly. The plain line is this. Hell, I like Thaddeus Lewis better than Josh Allen. That's right. I said it. You did say it. Anyways. I love how um, you do that. Yeah, the Col- <laughs> that Colts loss was definitely disappointing because it, it it takes because with the ball because when you have Baltimore surging now with Lamar Jackson, you got Denver surging now with with you know trying to save Van Jones's job, but right now you have to consider that if he goes eight and eight or better, he that's a good point. You have to you have to let, let him ride us out next year too, because um, this is coaching. Because the, the Broncos were the Broncos were starting to tank. They got rid of Demar- Demar- Thomas and whatnot. And they were starting to just get rid of players left and right, and instead of playing hard, and, and that's coaching. So. Bad look for the Colts here, really, in, in this spot, honestly. Um, let's go to the NFC real quick. So right now, we, we agree on the same thing. We, we'll keep the same locks last week, but the, Pittsburgh's lock. Uh, well, I guess the Baltimore Ravens is really more is, is really the only uh, X, the only X factor going on here. Pittsburgh at least got a wild Correct. card. Even they, if, even if they lose the division, they win the wild card at least. Okay. Mm-hmm. NFC time. One and two seeds currently. You have the Rams now in control again with the number one seed. Two is the Saints by virtue of losing to the Cowboys last week. Which, by the way, your thoughts on that game last week, Dallas and uh, New Orleans? Bro, really quick, okay? The Saints actually did not play the Cowboys last week. They played a team that had a silver helmet with a star on it, okay? They did not play the Cowboys. That's weird. That was not the Cowboys of 2018. It just wasn't. Did you watch that? I know you watched that game. I was texting with you. Yes. They did things that I don't feel like they were, should have been. I know I didn't have well, them capable, you want, you want see capable what, of doing it. You want to see my setup that, that night, though? My, my, my setup was the following. I was, I was in the studio. I had the TV on the uh, Cowboys game. I had the computer on the Warriors Rafters game, which is a great game, too, on top of that. And <laughs> I was podcasting with our man, Big TJ, at the time, too. True. So I had everything That's going on up. at the time. That was a, uh, that was a good game. Um Officials kind of shaking the end, but you know, whatever. It's what it is. All right. Um, but, uh, listen, the punchline is that game shouldn't have been. Now the Cowboys won it. Holy God. Mm hmm. The three seed, you got the Bears, who just lost to my Giants yesterday. Shout out to G. Stelio, G. W. Grouse. <laughs> yeah, by the way, he got real quiet on Twitter. Everybody noticed that. You know what's funny, what I, 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 you know, you know, what's funny though? I, I didn't talk shit to him yesterday on Twitter. You know why? Because the Giants didn't deserve that win. The way they play the end of the um, game, they didn't deserve that win. Well, let me be clear. If the Giants were that close in the game, the Bears didn't deserve that win. Let's be clear about well, it, okay? They, they, the, they didn't have Trubisky either. Come on. They got Chase Dale playing quarterback. Come on. It doesn't matter. They're about the same caliber quarterback. That's right. I said it. Whew, wow. Okay. Three seed Bears, four seed the Cowboys. The fifth and sixth seed right now currently. Right now, the, the, the five seed right now is the Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> the five seed, not, forget the six seed, not in the five seed. Um, and the six seed is right now is currently the Washington Redskins tonight. We'll find out tonight how they do against the Philadelphia uh, Eagles. Huge, huge, big, huge game tonight for the uh, Skins without, uh, of course, Alex yeah. for the year. Um, now I know I locked in the top two teams. Obviously, that they're actually all already in the playoffs because they both his divisions. Um, no. I believe I locked the Bears also last week too. You did. I I, I, I locked I locked a team from the north. Um, Minnesota, Michigan, I think. Yeah, I did too, and I think I unlocked. No, I did lock them last week. I'm going to unlock them now because <sighs> right now the start today they're not in number one. Seattle, you know what? <coughs> you know what? I, I, no, never mind. I'm gonna leave Minnesota as a lock because you, you gotta leave. You gotta leave both Minnesota and the Bears as a lock just because the rest of the NFC not right. named the Seattle Seahawks is a waste of your time. That's the fact. Because you can't. Expect the Redskins to hold on for their yeah. lives next next month. I'm sorry. So, this is you know, not Wilson Phillips. They cannot hold on for one more day. That's right. Boom, 80s drop. I love that song, by the way, too. Shut up. Um, <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, 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 Minnesota, even though they're not in the pitch right now, I still feel like their roster is better than anybody else's in the bottom of the of the uh, NFC, minus Seattle maybe. Um, I, I, I still think Minnesota will find a way to get in there. So I got Minnesota, Chicago, both locks um, in the NFC. Which leaves, but I tell you right now, the way I, the way to look right now, I'm I'm almost ready to give Seattle a lock also too because Seattle's schedule works out to their favor. You mentioned that. Um, I believe they have one more tough game remaining on their schedule. Kansas City. Outcome. Yeah, I'm waiting for the outcome of that and the movement of the rest of the uh, of the conference before I sign off on Seattle. Listen, it's not that I'm in a place 
where I, I disbelieve Russell Wilson anymore. We, we've talked about this. Um, now I believe he is the heart and soul. Um, it, 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 the, the place where I'm currently at is I don't believe that they are a complete team to hold on to get the necessary wins yet. And they may. I, I'm not going to rule it out as a possibility. I'm just not prepared to lock them yet. That being said, I'm also just as prepared, uh, should the Seattle Seahawks, uh, achieve the playoffs to make Russell Wilson the two time student of the game MVP in the NFL. By the way, one thing I, I, I noticed again yesterday, I noticed the Niners and all, but his pocket awareness is amazing. Like he's not, he doesn't even, he don't, I, I, I know it's been a few years since, since this has happened, but he doesn't, he, he doesn't even rely on the running anymore. The, the, the rely, the, the running is now second nature. It's like he only does when he has to run. He's, he's now a pocket quarterback. Well, that's always been true. I feel like, even I mean, other than his first two years, let's be clear, right? But that's been true uh, lately in his career. Who's always had good presence to an extent, and he's learning to run more controlled. Um, the year, if it was his second or third year, I forget. Um, but the um, the punchline is, he's lately been running only when he has to. He just has to a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> A bad line. <laughs> no, but saying. no, but he's he's. I mean, he's doing with, with, with receivers. I don't even know who the names are. I mean, when when Doug Baldwin's your best receiver, I mean, yeah, that's pretty damn yeah. good. Just saying. Love it. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm I'm about a week away from getting him a lock. Um, I'm also hesitant to get Cowboys a lock only because I want to see tonight's game against the Redskins, Eagles Redskins game because the Eagles can still turn around. Listen, the Cowboys had one good week, and I'm not prepared to shy from the Eagles yet. Uh, the Cowboys had one good week, and listen, they, the, 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 the concept that they were put, able to pull that off is probably going to get Zach Prescott a lot of money. Uh, Callan Coward went on it ad nauseum last week, and he is actually completely correct. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, uh, that game was big for their standings this year <clears throat> and for Dak Prescott to renegotiate his contract at the end of the year, being able to claim that he beat Drew Brees. But uh, can they finish strong? If any, if Jason Garrett has proven nothing to us, is his ability to finish is 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 very diminished. Well, again, so your locks right now are the Rams and Saints. Obviously, um, you uh-huh. still, still Minnesota, right? I still have Minnesota, and I still have the Bears. Although okay. they, <laughs> they give me plenty of reason to make fun of our boy GW as TWLIO. Right, and, and uh, by the way, the Bears Rams next week is going to be huge, huge. The same, huge. And I'm actually I'm a week away from, I'm, a, I'm a week away from doing Seattle a lock and Dallas. I still got to see more. I got to say, I, I, and it, no, I, I tell you what, if Philly loses tonight, I'll give Dallas a lock in the NFC East. I'm not even prepared to do that. I think we're gonna have some chaos. Whew, well, there you go. Anyway, Cal, good job as always. Before you got you go, and you oh, man. Yeah, first of all, it's fantastic. Uh, listen, uh, check out dinner time here. Uh, we got it going on here where we have an account on Spreaker now. Good job. Uh, EJ Christian will be on that show very soon. <clears throat> yeah. And he's probably picking off, flicking off the microphone again. We're, 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 we're going we're gonna to no, talk the next week or two and to, to schedule something soon. I, I already told TJ that also. Oh, now, now, now you're talking to TJ behind my back too. What you want? You want him to come on every week? He don't even watch sports no, no more. No, no, like, why did I do that? <laughs> I know that. That's that one, that one of the discussions we had on the podcast. Actually, it was the fact they didn't talk, watch any sports. Oh yeah, no, it's a conversation I've had with him. And trust me, folks, if if you haven't heard this particular take, even if you don't know who Tokyo Jameson is, listen to this podcast. It's a very interesting take. Um, and 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 you know, I I feel like. Everybody should at least hear it. You don't have to agree with it, but at least consider I, it. I respect it's, it's it. I respect strong. it. I respect yeah, it, definitely. Yeah, as do I. I. I don't even know what was said in that podcast yet. I just know it was a good conversation because I know the players and I know the content, and I'm looking forward to seeing it when it comes out later this week. That pod will drop later in the week, for the record. It will probably drop, probably drop on Friday. Like that. Cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> But anyway, Go ahead. you can find you can find me on Dinner Time with Tokyo Jameson as well. You can find me on Hilarity by Default's Default Assault every week with Demosthenes. You could, we're going to have that under control here soon, as soon as the YouTube guys let us actually upload a damn episode. Uh, and, of course, you can check out my writings on sportsmediapass.com. It was recently named at the UCF Knights 
we'll be headed to the uh, Fiesta Bowl. I haven't got word if I'm officially going yet, but I'm I'm trying to lean that way. And uh, you'll see all sorts of uh, college bowl game goodness coming up through sportsmediapass.com, which is a company of Blue HQ Media. So check that out. Of course, finally, you can check out my work looking at the Dolphins, going into every week, finding the top storylines on the Dolphins dive, and a quick takeaway from the game itself on dolphinswire.com of USA Today. Uh, Ernest Julius Christian, let me tell you, man, I loved it. It's not Christmas yet, but I got the gift of this podcast today, and I feel good about it. Until next time, brother, class dismissed. Thank you.